everything is interconnected and I do a lot of things. I create music, I create visual art, um, I do native plants in the garden and create garden landscapes and all these things kind of go in and out of each other. So definitely would say I'm a creator. Welcome to The Creators, here at Sum City. Coming to you every Tuesday and Friday, extended conversations that build community making for creators videos, by art, making what you make. Today on The Creators, Laura Cromwell is a ceramic artist and musician known to bang the drums loudly as heard in the formative feminist pop punk trio Growing Up Skipper. She also modulates to the hypnotic in the band Sifter and her ceramics, beauty, balance, and the natural world. So we invite you to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Well, you got to watch the show first. So let's get on with the show. Hey, welcome back to the creators of Some City. Bill Rogers here with Laura Cromwell. Hello. Laura, <laughs> thanks for coming in today. My pleasure. So I, I want to start this as we often do, which is to ask the question, do you consider yourself a creator, using the, the term creator as opposed to artist or anything else? And does that, that term, a creator, does that have any significance for you? Uh, yeah, I would say creator definitely does. I mean, I would call myself an artist, but creator is more all-encompassing, and um, I view it as... Um, Everything is interconnected, and I do a lot of things. I create music, I create visual art, um, I do native plants in the garden and create garden landscapes, and all these things kind of go in and out of each other. So definitely would say I'm a creator. And uh, we know each other because uh, you are from my new hometown, right across the street. And you made the big trip over here across the river, yes. which I'm uh, thankful for. Thanks for coming <laughs> over here to, to New Hampshire from Maine. Surely. You're a, another borderline person. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you also made a trip here to Maine, moving up from, from New York City. Yes. Uh, so why come up here to uh, this much smaller place mm. from the big city? Good question. Lots of people have asked me that I with bet. perplexed looks on yeah, their faces. Yeah, why would somebody do that? <laughs> why in the world would you live in my town? <laughs> um, well, I, I was born and bred in New York. I grew up in a very busy, wonderful place, the East Village of Manhattan. Um, and then moved to Brooklyn and lived there pretty much my whole life. Um, and I love it. I loved it. Um, but I'm a real nature person, have always been a real nature person. And I always wondered, well, what would it be like to just live in the thing that I idealize so much? Mm -hmm. As a city person, you know, how, you know, how... What is my perspective on this? You know, what what would it be like to live day in and day out, um, and and sort of see the cycles of life and birth and death and rebirth uh, as the seasons change in a much more natural setting than the city? Mm -hmm. So that was one big reason, mm -hmm. big reason I wanted to move. Um, and then there were other family was nearby, and mm -hmm. you know, but it was time for a change in life. So yeah. we kind of said, you know what? Let's do it. Yeah. And, and came up, and, and it's a big adventure for my husband and myself. Well, you mentioned that you have, uh, you know, worked in a number of different mediums, music, and within music, many different genres of music. Yes. Uh, because I've, I've heard you perform uh, locally with uh, more of a folk ensemble. Yep. Uh, quite quiet, subdued, wonderful, wonderful material. Yep. Um, Sifter? That's Sifter with uh, Monica Kriegler and uh, John Madam, who's my husband. Monica's an old friend, a beautiful singer-songwriter, and just all around an incredible creative person. And um, yeah, it's just a, a loving, fun, wonderful way to play her music. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of us all get together again. John and uh, Monica have known each other for, oh, 20 something years mm -hmm. and been playing together for that long. So I was super excited to join the 
join the party. Yeah, <laughs> and the uh, but also in terms of your your background and and gigs that you continue to play with, certainly yep. not soft, no. very loud, provocative, no, uh, yeah. powerful, powerful stuff. Not Is not that? that soft isn't powerful as well, yeah, but a different kind of powerful. Yeah, I I. Um, I try not to be a, too much of a split personality. I do feel like we all have lots of different sides to us. And um, I, when I started playing drums, I was a punk rocker and a riot girl. That was how I pl- started playing. I wasn't a trained musician. Uh, it was, I just had to do it. I had to do it. And I learned, and I learned from friends. And I was a young woman who was full of, you know. Where, when? This was, well, when I first started learning, I was living in San Francisco. Um, and I was hanging out with a bunch of punk rock ladies, the, you know, women who became L7 later and, um, other, and other friends of theirs. And um, I got a bunch of phone books together and started banging on the phone books. It started my, with that. People yeah, my said, friend bang, was learning bang. guitar, and we were just we just said, you know what, we got to do this, we got to do this together, and we we started playing. And I just the minute I started, I realized, well, I love this, and I've got to do this. So I kept going. And what was it about that? Was it the 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 beat, the rhythm, the the power, the uh, the, the the concepts behind it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You are a lumper like me, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I mean, I just loved, I just, you lose yourself when you start to play an instrument. You just, you know, there's that moment where you just go, oh, it's everything becomes timelessness and everything, everything just melts away mm. and you just are in the moment and it, it's everything. Yeah. Uh, so I just, the minute I've experienced that, I want, I just wanted to do that. Um, and then the p- sort of pop power punk thing was really meaningful to me. Uh, it gave me a voice um, in a way that, and, and, and also a connection to other um, young women who, who I think a lot of us were feeling the same thing. We were all, we all love rock and roll and needed to carve out our own space to mm-hmm. make that because, you know, rock and roll, you may not have heard this, but it's a little bit of a sexist sort of a <laughs> yeah. thing. And <laughs> it's sometimes hard yeah. to like, you know, you feel like constantly you have to prove yourself. And this is a way that we could say, you know what, you deal with us. Yes. You know. Well, you know, I was, I was thinking of, um, uh, Sam Shepard and the Holy Ghostly uh, was one of his early plays, uh, but of course Sam Shepard was uh, with Patti Smith. So thinking of Sam Shepard instead of Patti Smith is uh, sort of uh, you know that that very male uh, kind of uh, what do we call that saunter across the stage, right? Um, very very different kind of 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 power in in the you know, it's just just power just a strong beat yeah but but some very different stuff going on yeah. in a lot of that early music that that I know of you were involved with yeah yeah I mean it was uh yeah it was really a I don't know if it was just a reaction or or an or a an er action of just having mm. to just just do it. Just make it. Make it our own. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And so, did you uh, did you make a trip from uh, San Francisco back to? Did you uh, did you consider and do you consider uh, New York City, Manhattan, a lower the the lower uh, area of Manhattan? Is that is that home for you? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, Brooklyn. I, since I lived the past twenty so years in Brooklyn, that's I is really you know my heart, my home. But mm-hmm. yeah, growing up there, um, yeah, absolutely home, absolutely mm-hmm. home. Yeah, I only lived in San Francisco for a couple of years. And, okay. Um, kind of just came back and you know, and then said, okay, there's really no no reason to ever leave New York again because it's the greatest place on earth and all that jazz. And it was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Uh, you know, the East Village, and this is the 90s, early 90s, um, all through the 90s, such a creative place, all filled with artists and musicians. Just the cross-pollination was unbelievable. And everything was art. Everything was art all the time, you know. And did the ceramic work... Um 
come into come into play? Did you start working with uh, sculpting things, with, with building things up? So at that early not point? Till, not till much later that I didn't. I mean, I it's interesting because when I like went to high school, I went to high school of music and art, and I went to for I went for art, but then I discovered music and kind of the art kind of fell by the wayside for me for a long long time and it wasn't until much later in life that I sort of thought you know I want to I want to get back to the visual I miss that and I love it and I want to come back in it and I started taking some classes and that's how I plunged back in mm -hmm. to c ceramics mm -hmm. um to then it was pottery you know just taking some pottery classes and mm -hmm. you know the, the sort of the the way a lot of people go, and, mm -hmm. and then remembering, oh, yeah, this is a, a whole other thing. But, you know, and again, it sort of feels like just another outcropping of the same, you know, creator impulse, mm -hmm. you know. The, uh, in, in your work and in, in your artist statement about your ceramics, uh, from uh, lauracromwell.com. I found it there, and then you can find the ceramics cool. from yep. there. We'll put up uh, lauracromwell.com. Great. Um, in, in your statement, you talk about uh, you know, your work coming out of your relationship to the natural world. Yeah, yes. Is that, that true? Is that on? <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's very true. Uh, I mean, it was something I sort of discovered as I kept working, um, and I kept being drawn. I've always been drawn to, you know, draw... I, did some botanical illustration and, you know, drawn to um, just plants. Um, they're so beautiful and, you know, but it, there's more than that. I have a real, um, this is a little hard to talk about, it's very emotional actually mm. for me, but, uh, you know, I have real anxiety over what's happening to the world, mm. climate change and habitat destruction mm -hmm. and getting deeply into the forms of uh, the natural world mm -hmm. is a way to um, c commune, respect, highlight, uh, bring to life these things. Mm -hmm. um, and especially when, I mean, I started working on these things when I was in Brooklyn and... I wanted to. I wanted to surround myself with objects that were that paid homage to mm. um, living landscapes and interpret them in, in in a different, slightly different form mm -hmm. than just a photograph or something. Yeah, I've that been, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It, well, sense. it does. It does because I, I've been thinking lately about two great aesthetic. Um, uh, traditions and also modes in a way, which is the in, in film it's redemption, the redemptive, you know, creating a piece of a piece of something to keep it to to hold it, mm. and redemption of course has a has a, a, a religious uh, there's a, a religious notion of of saving human beings, saving this thing, saving the present, yes. saving this moment, and then there's another one. Which, which I've always felt more of an alliance with, which is the transformational. Yes. Is to be allied with something that's very real. So I think of uh, Sam Shepard was a key person to teach me a lot about theater, about this transformational notion of creating a character that sort of lifts us out in a, you know, that swagger of a male character walking across the stage and putting on a certain kind of voice yes. can create a kind of archetype of this, of this character. And then the play as a result can sort of... Uh, bring you into a different place you put on a jacket of something and and so I, I yeah. does that does that go anywhere for you in terms of transformation in your work mm. versus uh, versus capturing nature mm. capturing the nature natural world yeah because I definitely don't think I'm capturing it um, because that almost it would imply something static and sort of putting it in a mm. box mm -hmm. you know and I I think more that I am. I think of them almost like illustrations or something mm -hmm. like like th three dimensional illustrations or something um, interpretive. Mm -hmm. And it, it, but it's something that you can also touch. It's also tactile. Mm -hmm. So um, I think of your uh, some some. Uh, 
a, a, a tree, a log, and then some kind of a shape, butterfly, bird, something that's sort of lifting up from it. You mentioned motion. Mm-hmm. And I feel, you know, that feel that motion in your work, that, that movement towards movement. That's cool. Yeah. I'm movement glad up. you feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I want to spark conversation. I want people to... I, I want people to revere what we're losing mm. and what people take it for granted, you know, because it's mm. going to be gone. Um, so I want to create it everywhere I can and let's talk about it. Let's love it. Let's remember it. Let's feel it. And, and so in a, I guess, yeah, I guess that's exactly what it's all about, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of transformation. You have been quite active because we've been to a couple of the events that you've spearheaded uh concerts for the way life should be yes <laughs> <laughs> and you've been you've you've become uh quite involved in this community in the community you live in it's a wonderful community um we uh yeah you know i mean i won't get into politics too much but you know with the election happened in 2016 and I, it was it was hard, and we said, Monica and John and Jason and I got together and said, you know, hey, what can we, uh, how can we transform our feelings that we're having right now into something positive? Um, and we said, you know, let's put on house concerts, let's put on concerts, we'll raise money for a different group every month, it won't be one thing, it'll be all these things that we feel are important and We'll invite the community, and we were new here, and boy, did the community turn out. And I got, it was the best possible way to meet neighbors and learn who who we were now living with. And, you know, what I found out is, wow, there's so many interesting people here in South Berwick. Um, it, I mean, I just, writers and artists and musicians and teachers and doctors and, you know, all kinds of academics and just, just all kinds of people. I just, you know, and, and it was, you know, it was a great positive experience. It's been, yeah, really mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Now you have kept in touch with, um, so jumping from, I tend to jump a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> um, jumping from the ceramics to, uh, to, uh, to music, uh, you, you've still been active with, uh, some of your, your, your punker friends. Yes, sure. Yeah. And your provocateurs, your yep. fellow provocateurs. Absolutely. I've returned to my roots in a certain way, mm-hmm. playing now in a, in a band that I get to kick out the jams and yeah. it's super fun and super great. Yeah. 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 And t- t- tell me, tell me there, the, the names of those are, are the band. Um, that band is called by tyrant and mm-hmm. it's, uh, I play, um, <clears throat> with this woman, Brittany Anjou. It's her band, mm-hmm. uh, her brainchild, lovely brainchild. And, um, we got together cause we were both playing with the shags mm-hmm. and we, who are a fine old New Hampshire band. <laughs> so Sister Act, Primitive Sister Act, as I've heard them called. Um, and we were doing, we, we had a tribute band to her, the Dot Wigan Band, and that's how I met Brittany, and so By Tyrant kind of came out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's great. It's fantastic. It's super fun, and it's super fun after all this time to, like, get back to the, my roots and just go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> we go crazy. The shows are insane. Yeah. <laughs> And performing where generally? Um, well, a lot in New York. Um, we uh, we're, we did uh, Portland last year, last summer, and I think we're going to do it again in July. Uh, we're going to do sort of a Boston, Portland, New York little mini tour in mm-hmm. yeah till the beginning of July, and. Um, yeah, here and there, Brittany's got a crazy life, and now she's in Kuwait for a while teaching. Wow. So when huh. she comes back, we'll come and do some shows. One of the uh, one of the tunes, uh, "Banana Bike." Oh, that's the Dot Wigan Band. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is not that's not the same. That's not, not my turn, same. but that is Brittany. Is it yeah. in Banana does, Bike? Does it does it fit in terms of what that song is doing, or is it working in a very different way? Because one of the things I, I just wanted to. Uh, talk about was uh, um, and if, if this is you know not really a very different kind of thing but very simple lyrics um, but there's a lot more going on with those very simple lyrics and it reminds me of uh, 
I think it was Skipper-like. Oh, yeah. And the notion of a kind of, uh, referring to a, a kind of simpler way, almost like, you know, the, the Reagan era was, is, was throwing out these terms and, and, you know, making America simple again, uh, but referring to that in a very different way into this simple past or simple way of seeing things. And, and this is, uh, you know, sort of banana bike, this girl riding around in her bike, not using any, any gas and is the line, um, not worrying about the price of gas needs to worry about going too fast. <laughs> um, so that the simplicity in that, but, but, uh, uh, kind of cultural critique or cultural activism in it. Is that, cool. is that something that, that you find goes on with By Tyrant and with that, that work, a kind of simplicity mm. with a kind of, some, a kind of cut in there? Yeah, well, certainly uh, all, of the, all of that music, um, yeah, definitely plays with that idea of there's something happening on the surface, but then there's something else happening that, we're, that you can see through our music, um, you can hear through our music, um, but is maybe not, yeah, you maybe have to listen a little harder, mm -hmm. you know, or like maybe think about it a little bit more than just the what the... <laughs> just that surface. Yeah. I mean, that song in particular, Banana Bike, was, um, that's the Dotwagon band, and that, of course, as I said, it was a tribute to the Shags, uh, Dotwagon being, you know, the one who wrote all the, all the songs for the Shags, <clears throat> and she's in the Dotwagon band. It's her singing, and um, that song's about her sister, who has d died, um, Helen, who is the drummer for that mm. band. So that song's mm. really special to me because oh. Helen Wigan is a real, I, I just love her. I've always loved her. She's a huge influence. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she was a very special performer, very special musical mind, mm -hmm. which I'm sure a lot of people will laugh at because, you know, everybody loves to laugh at how <laughs> bad they were, but I don't think about it that yeah. way. I think she was very different and very special, very unique. Mm -hmm. And so that song's about her and how, and it's a true story about how she used to ride around, but it's also about Dot and how she speeds too much on the highway. Yeah. So it's all, it's, it's all these things. So yeah. yeah, yeah, there's definitely like the simple thing on top and then you know, there's more going on underneath, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, little uh, some, action in... Some small town sounds some, there, That's right. right. <laughs> Here in... Glad we moved out in of the Brooklyn. Center. <laughs> yep, yep. Here in some city, <laughs> life goes on. In that, in that sort of simple, um, nice... Now, nice is not the right word, but simple surface. Mm. Uh, thinking of the of again your ceramics, mm. that uh, the design of it is really striking, very stunning, and and often it's that it's the uh, sort of uh, indigo blue versus the the the, the white whitish gray of the. Porcelain. The, yeah, the yeah. porcelain behind it that makes that really jump out. Really. Pops. Yes, yeah. it really does. Yeah, I love that color, that cobalt color. Yeah. It's just, uh, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain that. I, it's mm -hmm. just the, the minute I found it, I'm, oh, that's it, that's, wow. it, you know. But again, it's sort of a, I really think of them as illustrations, so mm -hmm. that that my palette is, is a, I don't know, it's, I think of it on the, almost on a page, but, yeah. Do you often approach uh, something like that with 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 color specific colors in mind, or does the color come through the process at a later point? Oh, I would say at a later point, yeah, mm -hmm. because really, like, I'm concerned with form first. Mm -hmm. So I make the forms and then you know have a identity crisis while I'm trying to then because co then color you know yeah. <laughs> color is a whole other you know oh so then that's the second phase yeah usually mm -hmm. yeah that's how it goes for mm -hmm. me anyway yeah when you're working in the studio working uh especially on this small and, and highly detailed is it nice to go out uh or 
take a weekend off, or off is probably not the right word, but a weekend doing something, you know, very different and bang the drums mm. hard. It is. It's great to actually, it, sometimes it's hard to switch gears. I, I will, I will say I'm, I do, I struggle with that sometimes because when I'm deeply involved in music, I find my time in the studio goes down and I don't like that. But then, you know, when I'm deeply involved in the studio, I'm not practicing so much and you know I sort of forget that I'm a musician so I, I'm you know constantly my dream is to have the that p perfect balance where I can really do both things every day mm -hmm. that would be great you know but I haven't achieved that yet so you know keep well, working on it <laughs> that's it and I'm so glad that you're 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 close that you're that you're here that you're doing the work you're doing it's it's really inspiring it's Thanks, wonderful Bill. to be part of this community uh. Well, I'm I'm super pleased. It's it's a it's a wonderful place to be, and it, it really is a different experience for me, and uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, it's a very, it's, I'm really growing. It's a real growing experience mm -hmm. to be here and to I don't know just live a different, little bit different, slower life. A little mm -hmm. bit. It's not that much slower. Everybody I know is super busy. Honestly, here yeah. you know everybody is working all the time and super busy, and everybody gets up at five thirty. How do you do that? <laughs> I still can't. I'm still working on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but but it's a great community and it's a great and it's really great. It's it's I'm I'm loving life here. So wonderful the way <laughs> life should be. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is a banana bike, <laughs> and then you really get the way life should be. <laughs> well, thanks for making the trip across the river. Absolutely. <laughs> but before we close, anything you want to uh, throw in? Any any events coming up that you'd like people to know about? Uh, yeah, ramping up for some concerts and um, doing a concert with Sifter on, I think it's April 24th at Flask in Portland. And then um, in May, I'm doing a um, this new thing. Um, it's a um, it's the music of Twin Peaks, mm. so the soundtrack of Twin Peaks. Mm -hmm. uh, and the night is, is called TV Party, and it's all soundtracks, um, earworms, um, t TV, little, little TV things. Uh, so it's going to be a fabulous night. And so that's May 22nd in uh, Boston at once in Somerville. Mm -hmm. So those are uh, a couple things coming up. <laughs> Great. Don't miss them. <laughs> Terrific. And thank you for coming in. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll catch you at one of those shows. Cool. Thanks, Bill. Bye.